Word to your mother, it's your boy End of the Northern Lion, Northern Lion, coming at you from largely the West, actually, if you want to get technical. I forgot what we did in a recent run, maybe we randomed Isaac? Even if we played as Eden recently, I'm gonna play as Eden again because I like Eden and Eden likes me. And we're gonna start with the D100 and the cube of meat, that's a weird one. And a Justice card, which is actually awesome. So we're definitely gonna D100 the shit out of the D10 and pick up the mulligan instead. Oh, we don't have cube of meat anymore? I thought the cube of meat would stick with us like the, the same way that Guppy does. So we got skinny odd mushroom mulligan right now. This is actually like an insanely powerful run that I almost don't want to ever reroll again. Like it's kind of a one run already. We have no HP, admittedly, but apart from that, it's pretty good. All we need is one. Yeah, balls of steel will do it. In a way, like it, it kind of sounds like a. Uh, it kind of sounds like a cop out. But I almost don't want to use the D100 because we've been u It's become like Epic Fetus in a way. Not that it's overpowered, I guess, but in the same way that like once you get it, it defines the run, right? Like, as soon as you get the D100, you're already like, all right, well, this is going to be a zany run. I'd kind of like the D100, weirdly enough, to show up a little bit less often. And I know that it was one of the last items we needed for Platinum God, but it feels like it shows up all the gosh darn time. And even myself, and I love the zany runs, I get a little bit tired of the D100 from time to time, and this run is already amazing. Like, we've already had some amazing stuff show up. Incredibly high rate of fire, the mulligan, then small rock to give us plus one damage. It's like a really, really solid first floor. <laughs> I kind of don't want to reroll it. Maybe I won't reroll it, you know? Maybe this time I'll just stick with it. We'll see. We'll see. For now, are people going to be mad? Should I care? You know, it's a bunch of complicated questions all wrapped up here. If you want to see a D100 run, literally go back and watch, on average, like one out of every four runs we've ever had. I'll tell you what, I'm not going to reroll yet. I, I kind of really love high rate of fire, high damage. We'll see if maybe we can get a better, and by better I mean almost any spacebar item, and maybe I'll make my decision there. But you know what? i got to be true to myself, and I think I'm going to stick with what we got going on here rather than reroll ourselves into oblivion. And if that offends you, then I apologize. My, it's so good! I can't, I can't reroll it. I might hit spacebar by accident, but on purpose. I can't, uh, I can't give this one up. It's too good. Full health and lemon party. Those are both pretty good pills as well. I don't think the D100 rerolls your pill rotation. There's another item for you. You can call it the D, the, I was going to say the PhD, but that item already exists. I don't know. You can call it the D number something. It doesn't matter. And then, um... It don't literally call it the D number something. That'll sound shitty. But if you call it like the D something, re-roll your pill rotation. You ever think about that? Let's try on our monster fight for size here. I think that it is pretty much inconceivable that we lose this run unless we really, really fuck it up HP-wise. Like, if we get some HP here, I'd feel pretty good about it. It's not my favorite HP upgrade, but it is HP. And, yeah, I'll probably take Death's Touch here. I'm thinking that this is probably going to go down as like one of the fastest times we've ever balled out of control. What's the fastest time you've ever balled out of control, chat? It's kind of a personal question. I don't mean to put the onus on you to answer that if you're not comfortable with it, but uh, if you are comfortable with it, Snapchat me. I don't actually have Snapchat, so we'll roll with uh, Guppy's Paw here. I still don't get Snapchat. People explain it to me. I'm just like a little bit out of the target age group, I think. So for me, it's the thing that people use to send like nude pictures to one another, I think, but they can't be shared to other people. Isn't that like the whole reason the platform exists? It's like I can't imagine anybody being on the service except for that, and it's not because it's a bad service, it's just because I'm old. Old old in Snapchat terms, in, in human existence terms. I'm still trucking along pretty nicely here. That was bad damage on my part, but I came in here to pick up that. And we'll be on our merry way now. HP should not be a concern for us at all. We're three minutes through the first two floors. Pretty disgusting. Very powerful run. Thank you for the good Eden Seed. I don't know why Eden Seed. You know, because it sounds like Eden Cheese. Eat and not eat um cheese. Although, mmm, maybe I will. After the stream's over, you have some cold pizza in the fridge, but... Dude, pizza, there's a reason it's my favorite takeout. Do you classify pizza as takeout? I mean, it's kind of take delivery, but whatever. Anyway, it fits under the umbrella. When you buy a pizza, you're getting two meals. You're getting warm pizza and then cold pizza the next day. 
you're not just buying dinner. You're buying dinner and then like a, you know, late lunch or, sorry, a, a late breakfast or an early lunch or something like that. That's why I like it. You're getting two meals for the price of, you know, probably like 1.2 meals. If you buy sushi, you gotta eat all that shit ASAP. You're not gonna be eating leftover sushi the next day. At least you probably shouldn't. I think you might run into some kind of, you know, parasitical issues there. But with pizza, it's all good, man, as long as you don't leave it out on the counter. And even if you do, I think we've all been there. Aw, oh, shit, we left the pizza out on the counter. Who's gonna take a slice? I'll still take a slice. I've never gotten ill from it, but it's probably a bad practice. You can, and that's not fair, you know, with leftover Chinese food, you can do the same thing. But I gotta be honest with you, I know it's gonna sound, uh, it's gonna sound ridiculous, but I think I'm kinda over Chinese food. I used to love Chinese food. I had a really nice Chinese food place, uh, well, not nice, but a really cheap slash delicious Chinese food place that was uh, near my school when I was in college, and I uh, I ordered on the regular. But now, I just, it's not that I, like, I think I've changed. I don't think Chinese food has changed. I think, uh, you know, I needed to offer, like, a little bit more. Now it's like, there's, there's too many options. If there was, like, only Chinese food and pizza, I'd occasionally get Chinese food. But if there's, like, Thai delivery, I'll get some Thai delivery or some Indian food or... You know, something along those lines, but, you know, then pizza's, of course, the omnipresent threat. However, I just can't convince myself that often to get Chinese food anymore. It, I don't know if it's a sad story or what, but it's it's become one of my, my lesser options for, for takeout. Maybe I'm crazy, though. And it's not like an MSG thing, man. I'm actually one of those people who I wouldn't say I necessarily like MSG, but you know what? Fuck it. I think I like MSG. I think a lot of the hate from MSG comes from an ignorant standpoint, doesn't understand, you know, what it is. So, okay, admittedly, some people out there, you know, are mildly allergic to it, get headaches, whatever. But I, you know, when I see no MSG on a Chinese food sign, I'm like, fuck that, dude, give me more MSG. I think it tastes delicious. I'm not saying the business should change to fit my whims, I'm just saying, you know, if I'm given the choice between MSG and no MSG, I'll say, hey, what's better? I don't care about the MSG, it's a non-factor for me. In short, I've got a lot of thinking to do. Uh, I'm gonna use the stars card. We could have saved it for later. I actually did not think that I had been to the item room on this floor, that's my mistake. I was gonna uh, use it to try to take us to the boss room, but I got lost because of Curse of the Lost. So that was a very, very poor play. Don't really need the full health pill right now though, I'd say. I'm hoping that, um, this is Caves 1, right? Okay, the catacombs one, yeah. I'm hoping that uh, we can end up getting maybe like a nine lives here would be a big help. Oh shit, I'm back in like the area that I just was in, aren't I? I think that that is a dead. I might as well check it out while we're here. We're in no rush, you know? We can always do boss rush later on the run. Okay, this is another like dead end here. Not dead end, sorry, another like connector room, which is good. But this is where we drop the full health pill. No, this is where we drop the full health. I'm lost, man. There's where we dropped the full health pill. Should've bought Black Candle on the last floor. Uh, I thought this was actually gonna take us back to the spawn room, so I clearly have no idea where we are, but at least we found the right way. I'm not good with mazes, man. I'm not a, I'm not a maze kind of guy. And baby, I'm amazed by the way you follow the left wall. You figured out how to solve it. That doesn't really work. I'm sorry, Mr. McCartney. Now, you can make an argument that it's not the best idea to Guppy's Paw that uh, Spirit Heart right away. And I think that argument is actually the proper argument. The action that I took there was probably a little bit short-sighted, but uh, I, I kind of am feeling like we have a pretty big tolerance for minor mistakes on this run, which is not a good excuse to be making minor mistakes. However, why is it better? You know, let's go into a discussion about that. Why is it better to not use Guppy's Paw right away? Well, Assuming you don't have like Horror of Babylon or something like that, I think it's better to not use it right away because you can use it later as well. Like if you use it right away, you've already popped your chair, you get no advantage out of having the Red Heart. Whereas the Red Heart, if you have it, could allow you to play a Blood Bank, gain money, gain more HP. Basically you're leveraging your HP into more HP or, or in a, a Demon Judgment play or something like that. Whereas uh, if you use it right away, it's just gone forever. Normally with Guppy's Paw, unless you're at risk of death, you can pretty much just, uh, you know, save your red hearts and then use them all at the end to get yourself as close to the HP cap as possible. This all being said, there's pretty much no risk of this run going south. I'd be very surprised if we don't get another super powerful item or we don't become guppy on this run. Um, if we could pick up, I know we had BFF show up, but if we could pick up Hive Mind, 
I would be super into that because we're rolling out of control. Uh, this is a situation where actually maybe it was the right idea to use Guppy's. Ooh, ooh, Guppy's paw right away. Because we're going to be able to access this. And was it worth it? Well, we picked up a spirit heart and a key and a little bit of money out of it. So I would say probably it's half decent at least. Very poor damage on my part there. That's not how you fight Mega Fatty. That's not the way I want to be known for fighting Mega Fatty. By the way, I apologize for my my hoarseness today. Not my hoarseness. I never apologize for that. But um, I'm still a little bit under the weather. Many people say, Northern Lion, how's your gland? You keep talking about your gland being swollen, you freaking sicko. No, but like I have a, like a lymph node under my jaw. And it was seriously like the size of like a, a very ripe grape. Now it's a little bit more, I don't know, like a like a currant or something like that. You know, like a little tiny uh, fruit. It's still there. But the, you know, lymphocytes or whatever are doing a pretty good job of fighting it off. I appreciate that. White blood cells. Hey, shout out to White Blood Cells. They don't get enough credit. Also, probably the best album from the White Stripes. I know a lot of people are into Elephant, but White Blood Cells, you know. Dead leaves in the dirty ground when you know I'm not around. Whoa, was Jack White just here? No, sorry, that was Jack Black, Jack Black doing his impression of Jack White from Bob Dylan's Blonde on Blonde. Yes, please. <laughs> All right. Uh, I could trade a bomb for a key, probably. It might even require two bombs, and it might even still be worth it, but I'm not going to do it because we're doing so well kind of with all consumables right now. Paralysis. Well, I'm definitely not going to take that. I think Gubby's Paw is a little bit more uh, useful for us in this situation. It definitely is a, a better ceiling of what it could do for us, I think. Did we skip our shop? I don't have the money for it really anyway. Oh, now I totally do. Yeah, we should go back for that. Every time I get hit by a neutral fly, somebody out there comes a little closer to, you know, hurting themselves. And I apologize for it. That's something I should take responsibility for, even though it makes no sense. Pentagram? Mark? Absolutely. A little bit of HP concerns, but uh, at the same time, a huge damage increase and a uh, little bit of a deal with the devil percentage chance increase as well. Admittedly, this puts a pretty big knock in our guppy plans because we're pretty much guaranteed to play, pay the Krampus tax at some point. Uh, that's that's going to take one devil room away from us. Okie dokie. We're probably going to get one full of red chests, but those could have guppy items within them. Of course, I could have saved a spirit heart by just bombing our way through this room. You should know there's like a plus 10% chance to a secret room being next to a curse room. I don't mind a greed fight right now. I mean, I, I would prefer to be able to buy a Spirit Heart just because it is a little, little iffy HP-wise, but I think we're gonna probably get out of this just fine. Is there, there's gotta be like a jack of every color, right? Like you can definitely have, for last names, you can definitely have like a jack brown, a jack green. You could have like a jack blue, but like, like kind of an Irish or English last name, like B-L-O-U-G-H. What about like a like a Jack Turquoise? J J Hello, my name is Jacques Chartreuse. I'm telling you, man, we can get a Jack of every color here. We're gonna be fucking awesome at Euchre. Now, there's a nerdy joke for you. Why is Euchre on it? Maybe that was just a my school thing. By the way, I'm one of the kids who was playing Euchre at lunchtime. But uh, every lunchtime we played, we played euchre at our lunch table, and I found that it's like a weirdly, at least like within North America, a weirdly like cross-cultural nerd connection thing. I thought euchre was just like, I guess it's because it's kind of like an old person game, and nerds like doing things that old people like doing to some extent, you know, like, you know, reading. Fucking nerd likes expanding his knowledge instead of just. I don't want to. I don't want to throw any other hobby in there because I also, you know, the hobbies that nerds shit on. I, I don't see anything wrong with them, man. We all we all got our own battles to fight on our own soil here, you know? Sports? I like sports, man. Sports? Look, if you're a nerd, and I don't mean that as a derogatory term. I mean that as like a term of endearment. If you're a nerd and you shit on sports, you're just a bunch of overgrown Neanderthals hitting each other. I don't get it. What you're missing is stats, man. Oh my god, the stats involved in sports are so good. 
If you like playing like, you know, Dungeons and Dragons or Warhammer or something like that, every team has like 30 character sheets and stats that you can pull from just an enormously large sample size and they can get promoted or relegated. They have different team chemistries and compositions depending on who you pair them with. Sports is really just the first RPG, man. It's simulated war. We, like the sports community and the, the video games community, they already have some overlap, of course, but they need to be more copacetic with one another because they're different sides of the same coin, man. I know that a lot of it comes from, like, you know, jocks shitting on nerds or whatever. And maybe that still happens and I'm just unfamiliar with it. However, I think, you know, you gotta open your mind to sports. And you don't have to, I'm not saying you have to watch a sport or anything like that, but it's a really nice, like, statistical thing to follow. Like, playing fantasy football or fantasy, fantasy hockey or fantasy baseball or something like that. Fantasy soccer, which is, I guess, just fantasy football, <laughs> depending on where you live. It gives you a new appreciation for it. And then I was gonna say, like, yo, knitting. What's wrong with knitting? Knitting's awesome. Learn a skill that's actually practical that's kind of fallen by the wayside in our world of convenience now. As far as I'm concerned, if you got a hobby, man, that's cool. Oh, but what about watching TV, Northern Lion? You're just putting your mind on pause. Yo, you know, some people need that as stress relief after a long day of work. TV gets a lot of cynicism about it, but we're living in a new golden age of TV, man. Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, House of Cards, Mad Men, Fargo. There's so many great TV shows that have been on like within the past 10 years. You know, you, you get to experience some of the best writing uh, in, in any media on TV right now, and you get to do it every single week. I'm just a positive guy, I guess, but, uh, oh, yeah, that's good. If you are positive, then maybe you'll get Cricket's body more. I'm just saying, we should we should learn to stop shitting on each other's hobbies, man. Just let, just be excited that you have a hobby. As long as your hobby, like, doesn't, you know, hurt other people that are not cool with it, you know? That's pretty shitty of you. Trying to make the world a better place, man. If you're in like, you know, boxing or Muay Thai or something like that, I have an incredible amount of respect for that. Taking care of your body and also, you know, learning some valuable skills about what it's like to get punched in the fucking dome. It's valuable, man. Oh, we haven't fought our boss yet? Weird, Fallen. Ah, adversary. It's kind of like the Fallen, but not quite. Ooh. Please. Help me. Oh, I knew I was going to get hit there. That's all right. We picked up growth hormones, which is awesome here. All right. Down to the next floor. This is a big one because we're probably going to have a pretty good chance of doing boss rush. And honestly, our range is actually kind of nice. We have low range. But because of the low range, or maybe it's shot speed. I'm not totally sure, which is effectively effective range. Um, because of our shot speed... Or range. Um, the Cricket's body shots don't get that far from the tree, you know? So we actually end up having a much higher hit rate with them. Which I think has really improved our DPS, which is awesome here. I don't know why I'm in, I'm in such a good mood today. People, th people tend to think that I'm kind of a cynical dude. Um, and that's true, eh? Like, people do tend to think that. If you watch me on the NLSS or something like that, you know, I, I'm the kind of guy I crack jokes at other people's expense. Sometimes it's a bad habit, sometimes it goes too far, and I always feel bad about it. But uh, for the most part, I'm actually like very positive. One of, one of the things that I think makes people think I'm cynical is that I'm, I'm cracking those jokes at people's expense, but usually I'm cracking them at their expense, or often I'm cracking them at their expense when they're being cynical. Like when someone gets super down on something, and I feel like they don't have any reason to get down on it. You know, Fuck those people for enjoying themselves, and then people go, oh, Northern Line, you're so cynical. Anyway. It's like Lenny Kravitz said, man. You gotta let love in. He said, he said something like that. I think I might roll with Book of Revelations. Oh, well, we might as well get that now. Uh, I think we might roll with Book of Revelations, which is like the most boring of all the cards. Wait a minute, can we do like... Let's try something weird here. It sucks that we have Curse of the Unknown, but I bet we can strength card Guppy's Paw. And... Snag three spirit hearts. If that just straight up killed me, I don't know how it would have, but if it did, I would have been like, you know what? Fair play. <laughs> I tried to cheat the system a little bit. It's 16 and a half minutes, so more than enough time to do everything and do boss rush, if that's that's something that we feel is in the cards for ourselves here. Alright, I'm pretty pissed that we're actually fighting greed, then super greed. That's the worst combo, because there's just no reason for it. I've already been to the item room. Uh, I'll, I'll go explore some more, because it'll give us more charges on Book of Revelations. 
Admittedly, giving up Guppy's paw kind of sucks because it takes uh, 18 rooms to reach the uh, the same number of spirit hearts from Guppy's or from uh, Book of Revelations that you'd get from Guppy's paw in one HP upgrade. But there's not that much we can do about that if you have a limited number of HP upgrades, which I'm assuming that we do. I'm just tired of seeing people shit on like other people's hobbies, man. It's a relatively minor pet peeve, admittedly. You know, the world has bigger problems than that, of course. However, like football. No, <laughs> that's that's a joke about you know self-referential. Anyway, but I hate seeing like when it's the Super Bowl or fucking Eurovision or something like that, and everyone goes Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, I don't watch the Super Bowl. Give me some attention about how I don't watch the Super Bowl. It's just it's just overgrown. Neanderthals bumping into one another. Yo, man! It's such a shortcut to perceive legitimacy to shit on another person's hobby, but just because you're shitting on something doesn't necessarily mean you're an authority. I think one of the things that human beings fall victim to, uh, just as like a kind of innate fallacy, is that we automatically assume that if somebody's negative, they have a little bit more of a familiarity, you know, they know what they t they're talking about, they're an authority. Because I think like, on an like, instinctive level, we're like, why would someone shit on something if they're not familiar with it? But I think that happens all the time, you know? You see it on YouTube. If somebody has a negative opinion of something... Two of diamonds, huh? Somebody has a negative opinion of something... People, nobody questions their authority. Nobody says, how much did your competitor pay you? Or how much did this game's competitor pay you? Satanic Bible's a little better, but I'm gonna stick with Book of Revelations. Like, if you shit on, like, Hotline Miami, you wouldn't be like, how much did LA cops pay you to shit on this game? But the second you have a positive opinion... Like, concerns of payola come into it. We're, we as a, not everybody, but I think in general, as a, as a society, we're way less likely to question negative opinions. Which I think is, it, it's something I, I work on a lot in my life, you know, to be like, you know, a negative opinion is no more valid than a positive opinion. It's not necessarily coming from any more of a place of sincerity. Because, you know, the thing is, people are like, well, of course positive opinions are more likely to be bought out. Because why would you ever pay for a negative opinion? That's true. However, uh, okay, well, this is fine. It, it doesn't mean that a negative opinion is not deceptively self-serving. Because I think if you have a negative opinion, people are, like a predominantly negative opinion, people are more likely to think that you're an authority and that you're, you're honest. And as a result, it's like self-promoting. I'm going to keep this Emperor card. As much as I would love to teleport out of this room, and I really would. Especially with Curse of the Unknown and, you know, an unknown number of spirit hearts. I'm trying to say the negativity, in some to some extent, is a shortcut to reputability, which I don't think is, is fair at all. And maybe I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not, not suggesting that critics that are negative are necessarily unreputable. All I'm saying is that, you know, there's a pretty, if you brand yourself as like somebody who's negative, people will always assume you're being honest. If you brand yourself as someone who's positive, people will always assume that you're, well, often people will assume that you're being disingenuous. And to me, that strikes me as a weird-ass double standard. I think you should assume, you know, I know people have been burned before, but I think you should assume that everybody's being, you know, sincere for the most part. In my experience, the vast majority of people operate with near sincerity on a daily basis. Don't let a couple of bad apples spoil the bunch for everybody else. I don't think I'm taking that much damage here, but admittedly I'm a little concerned. If I died on boss rush with Curse of the Unknown, I think people would largely be like, you know, you got what you deserved. <laughs> I am happy with the Tech Point 5 pickup though. I always say the same shit about Tech Point 5, but really, one of the best DPS upgrades in the game. And this is not going particularly slowly either, which is nice. I would really love the ability to fly, like if we could just get like a, a transcendence or something from this. Not the Johnny Depp movie though. Yo, Ed, you gotta sue Johnny Depp's, man! He came out with a movie that stole the name of an item from Rebirth, dog. You're gonna let him get away with that shit? That gives it judicial precedence. I can't believe I got hit by that poop. In hindsight, I'm actually not that surprised, but I, I wish that I was more surprised, let's put it that way. Yeah, I'll just stand right there and take damage. Alright, I'm starting to get a little concerned, I'll admit this uh, I'll admit this to you in confidence. Where's Pin at? Pin's gonna get screwed, man, as long as I can actually, like, hit him directly? Yeah, I was gonna say, he has, like, one hit in him. A lot of, like, low HP enemies with multiple body segments that can be hit at once just stand no chance. Alright, this is a big one. 
This is bloat. That was bad damage on my part. All right, get behind bloat. Ooh, he didn't die. He did not die. He is still somehow not dead. All right, I'm a little, little concerned. Tech point five, finish the job, buddy. Thank you. All right, we're on horseman now. Horseman. Here's what I would, to finish my rant. If you're a gamer of a certain age, you've probably experienced, like, some degree. I'm not trying to suggest that it's an enormous thing, or that it isn't an enormous thing. You know, only you know your experiences and the people you've told. You probably experienced some degree of, of prejudice or something as a result of your hobby. If you're, like, 30, maybe you grew up with people thinking, like, Dungeons and Dragons is, like, a Satanistic influence and is gonna, like, you know, lead to you fucking blowing up a building or something like that, right? That's fucked up. But don't let that shit motivate you to be shitty to other people who have hobbies. It's just perpetuating the cycle, man. You know, if you got picked on by a football player who's like, you like playing Pokemon, nerd? If you want to be a better influence for the... F oh, shit. I really don't like that this is not a deal with the devil floor. De <laughs> deal with the devil floor. If you want to be the change you see in the world, like, you have two ways to handle pain in, in your life. I'm not a self-help guy. This is just my philosophy. There's two ways to handle pain in your life, right? You can you can use it as a as a motivator to make yourself better, and you can hold on to that for your whole life, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that, you know. If you get made fun of for being overweight, and you end up, you, if you're like working out and you're saying, "Oh, my 10 year reunion, I'm gonna show these people what's up," you know, that's you're, you're making a positive change in your life. There's nothing wrong with that. But then at some point, you also gotta just try to like, you know. Do your part to, to stop that kind of culture where that shit happens, I think. I don't know. I didn't articulate that quite in the way that I wanted to. Basically, like, you can try to get your revenge on people. You can be like, well, I was picked on for this, so I'm going to pick on other people to get my, you know, to get back to equilibrium. It's only fair. Or you can be like, you know, someone shit on me. That was stupid. They probably regret it now. I'm not going to perpetuate the cycle because then, in turn, that makes me the equivalent shithead of the person that was a shithead to me in the first place, you know? If you're judged a lot, I think the tendency is to become very judgmental, and I just it just perpetuates the cycle, man. Like, yeah, you break even, but the world as a whole suffers because it loses your positivity. Ah, uh, yeah, whatever, you fucking dork, you fucking idiot. Apologies to Bostonians who I may be offended by using their accent as a shortcut for, uh... And yes, that was meant to be Bostonian. <laughs> I know my accent is not particularly strong. Man, I never really thought about it, but, uh, Onian is just like a, it sounds like a fucking space race. Like, I guess I'm a Bostonian from the planet Boston. That's a good amount of money. I don't I probably shouldn't have even picked up the HP, to be honest with you. Anyway, let's move along here. I could use the Emperor card, and I think I would be justified. Maybe not optimally, but close to optimally, I'd be justified to use the, uh... Emperor card here to skip what is essentially two floors, but I'm just gonna do the the normal thing and I'll save it for the cathedral In the hopes that that'll expedite a floor. That's a little bit more annoying for me unless I get like a uh, If I get like a compass on this floor or maybe even just a map that would be fine by me as well Yeah That's my philosophy on it I don't have anything more to say. I've gotten on my soapbox. This is the first time I've ever exhausted my my conversational will over the course of an episode. It's been. A, I'm really glad on this episode though that I didn't succumb to my own the pressure in my head, you know, and and get a cerebral edema. But mostly, no, rather that I didn't succumb to the pressure in my head and uh, and uh, go full D100 strats because I actually think that we've had a really cool run. And we might not have had quite as cool of a run without the D100, or with the D100. And, you know, it's possible that we would have had a cooler run with the D100, admittedly. But uh, I, I'm, I'm glad I stuck to my guns on this one, and we ended up having a, a fun time. It's also a very fast run. And I like, like, glass cannon-y fast runs. It's not like I want... Is it, fuck your conspiracy theories that people were like, well, you can tell he only plays this for the money, because he wants runs to be over as fast as possible. Yeah, you say that, but that's like speedrunners, man. Dude, you can tell that speedrunners are only in it for the money because they want their runs to be over as fast as possible, you know? No, it's like, I, I just really like that style as opposed to a long fucking grind out like an 80 minute Isaac run where you get one damage upgrade. It's more fun to like go toe to toe with the game in like a heavyweight knockout, you know, style here is my philosophy. 
I shouldn't even take the time to address this, because it's ridiculous. However, because I feel the need to, and I have respect for all of you, I will. You the people who say, like, oh, you can tell Northern Lion just plays Rebirth for the views, man. This is still, like, my go-to recreational game. Like, when I was on vacation with Kate, I was playing the game, like, three runs a day without even recording it. I was just like, it wasn't even either to be like, oh, I gotta keep my skills up. Boss is gonna be real mad if I come back and I've lost my edge. No, it was like, I just really like playing the game and I hope that comes across in the videos here. People see what they wanna see, man. If, if you're, uh, you know, if you're not in a place that you're happy with, you're gonna assume that the same is happening with, uh, with other people. And again, it's perpetuating the bullshit cycle, man. All in all, I think the world's in a pretty good place, though. I'm not very cynical about like human nature or anything like that. I'm just trying to say, you know, we have we have the potential to be much nicer to one another. And then we're, I'm talking about shit on the internet, you know. There are there's also like armed conflict in the world, which if I had to say, I'd say armed conflict in the world is probably a more serious and pressing concern than, you know, people being kind of jerks to one another online, but you just, you know, think about it, man. You never lose out by being nice to somebody. If you're nice to someone, the worst thing they can do is not return that. And you know what? If they weren't nice to you in return, they missed out. Because they missed out on more of your niceness. How do you feel about that hot knowledge, bitch? You gotta add that in the end, because otherwise it would be too on the nose and sincere, and I would feel uncomfortable saying it. That's true. That's a fault of mine. I'm not afraid to admit it. We got a second level bandage girl for some charm shots here. Who was your favorite cast member from Charmed? Are you a Shannon Doherty fan? Alyssa Milano or Rose McGowan. I was strong I fancy myself as a little bit of a Rose McGowan type uh, type gentleman. When I was 13, totally could have handled that, no problem. Alright, so we're gonna head up and use our, our Emperor card on the Cathedral. Should give us a, a pretty easy shortcut to finishing this off. And then on the chest, you know, we already have like a great base for synergies. I would just love to see more. I would actually, weirdly enough, love to see like one range upgrade on the chest. Normally, that would be pretty shitty. Oh man, I'm actually getting pooped on a little bit here. Normally, that would be pretty shitty, but as of right now, my range is low enough that I, I think that's partly Cricket's body lowers your effective range a little bit. Um, but my range is low enough that it's actually very difficult for me to be in a position to hit Isaac. And I also need to be in exactly a straight line to hit with Death's Touch, because it doesn't... Uh, maybe it is affected by momentum, yeah, but, you know, without range, we don't have too much uh, time for that momentum to take effect. And we have Tech Point 5, which requires us to be in a straight line in order to hit, because that definitely doesn't have momentum. At least not perceptible momentum. So yeah, a, a range upgrade would help out an awful lot here. I'm starting to be a little bit concerned about our HP, actually. I think we could theoretically lose this run. Let's hope not, though. Uh, not a big help. Very big help. Eh, it's alright. Okay, Cricket Set is the big one here. This will be interesting. We're going to be doing a ton of damage, and our flies and spiders are going to be doing even more, but I don't really have a huge window for taking damage of my own, so I'm a little concerned on that account. Anytime we can play chicken with chubs. <laughs> I don't know why that sounds like a euphemism for masturbating. Anytime we can choke the chicken with chubby. We got a good situation going on, though, and we'll see how quickly we kill Mega Fatty here. It's relatively fast. Okay, I can... I can feel pretty good about this. That was a really dumb bit of damage that I, to be honest with you, just can't afford to take. We don't have the HP reservoir in order, in order to draw from that. We may end up, this is a little bit forward thinking right now, but we may end up um, having to rely on Guppy's Collar resing us once or maybe even twice. Which is not a, it's not a safe bet. Let's put it that way. You know, we got like roulette odds, basically. Um, it's possible that we can pull ourselves out of this hole. And I don't think we need that much HP to actually beat Blue Baby. I wonder if we'll go free damage style or we'll go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I think I'd almost rather just go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Get it done as soon as possible, you know, because I've got orbitals that can get in there and do some damage. We really need to not take unnecessary damage on the intervening rooms, though. Ooh, not Balls of Steel, but Hematomesis is actually meaningless for us now that I think about it. <laughs> If we had just a little bit more HP, we could we could make it work, but... Or if we could somehow get to a half-heart interval. It would... no, nah, it wouldn't really work. That's okay. Actually, we got a great uh, run here for taking out Teratomo. And Fistula, for that matter. 
Like, the Cricket's body shots, like, don't dissipate because our range is so low that, uh, pretty much they can hit an enemy, like, five times for the cost of one, which is pretty awesome. It's like a 20-20 times 5 over 2, man. I don't know why my brain chose to do the math in that weird way. You could also just say it's a normal shot times 5. Instead of 2020 times 5 over 2, but whatever. Um, we accidentally killed Gluttony first, which we probably should not have done. We stacked up an extra Spirit Heart here, which is nice, and apparently I chose the right direction. I actually think we're going to be really good against the Haunt. Like, this is a very anti-Haunt kind of style of uh, damage right now. We got our own kind of homemade Proptosis here, honestly, is what's going on. So I do want to go, like, toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but it's risky. We don't have any permanent Polaroid invincibility. Ah, I think we're gonna come out of this just fine now that I look at it, but still slightly wary. My brain is unable to process this stuff, giving me a weird kind of like, you know, fuzzy feeling in my head, but that's okay because the fight is over. Thanks for watching. That was a really fun run. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.